as the title says, yes, this is Happy New Year K1 style. As um, I'm going to do a, now I'm not going to do a review of the K1 show. Uh, and for those of you that don't know what K1 is, I'll explain that in a minute. But um, I am going to talk about it. But anyways, I know a lot of people on my last bit of the last two videos I've done, I've asked for an ROH rant as much as, you know, I did the WWE rant, did the TNA rant. Um, the reason why you will not be getting an ROH rant in the immediate future is this. I have seen pretty much everything up until, or up and including, the LAX shows. I have not seen anything past that. I have not seen anything Adam Pierce has booked. <coughs> so in my opinion, that would not be fair to go on a big long rant, particularly since they have fixed a lot of the things that I have wanted them to fix. And um, so I don't think that's a fair rant to do until I have seen enough of the stuff to rant about. And if I feel like it, I will do that. It will probably not be until after the pay-per-view if it happens, just so you know. Now, to get on to this video. So, well, some of you probably have no idea what K1 is. And if you don't know what K1 is, K1 is basically a kick kickboxing organization. Um, and if you like stand-up and MMA more than you like um, you know, the grappling... K1 is probably something you might want to look into. Just saying. But uh, K1 Dynamite is their their year-end mega show, um, such as this, which had 18 fights. I am not shitting you. 18 fights on this card. And um, <clears throat> so there is that. And um, this is their big sh this is their big show. K1 was, of course, the big rival of Pride. Um, not only because they would put on dueling shows against each other but also the fact that they would also fight over um, uh, fighters as well. <coughs> so there is all of that. Um, K1 is still here. Pride is not. Um, when Pride went under and um, UFC bought Pride and basically got rid of all of the Pride people, K1 brought a lot of those people in to create Dream. That is their MMA promotion. Um, how long it will be around, we don't know, but hopefully it's around a little bit longer. But this was a, um, this had some MMA stuff on it, which is why I wanted to watch it. And this has also had, of course, some K1 stuff on it, the uh, kickboxing stuff. Um, a little bit of both. Um, overall, I would call this a great entertaining show. I would not call it a great MMA show, and that there wasn't there was a lot of great fights on here. But as a show, it was pretty good. If you wanted to watch it live, you basically had to be up at 5 o'clock. Um, yesterday, which would have been uh, New Year's Eve, um, in the morning, to watch a Japanese stream. This did not air at all in the U.S. It was supposed. Um, it was a lot of people thought it was going to air on HDNet, but that apparently fell through. Then it was going to air on a streaming site in the U. For uh, it was going to air on a streaming site that fell through. So basically, if you wanted to watch this thing, you had to wake up and watch it butterly in the morning. Um, I'm glad I did, though. It was entertaining. Uh, if you've never seen a K1 show, uh, particularly the Dynamite show, um, they pretty much pull out all the stops, light shows, entertaining stuff. Um, of course, you, I watched the Japanese feed, so I got to see the weird Japanese commercials and the, the Japanese celebrities doing their uh, commentary and stuff, which I had no idea what they were talking about or who any of the people were, but that's okay. Um, but, um, there were a couple of fights on here I wanted to see. One of the fights I did not get to see, unfortunately, um, due to the fact that, um, Hanson versus Jay-Z was canceled at the last, last minute. Um, that was a fight I wanted to see, particularly since the other fight that I wanted to see took on a bit more importance, kind of, um, in the fact that <coughs> Eddie Alvarez was going to take on Aoki, and that was going to be for the Whamma Bell. <laughs> <coughs> which I will talk about in a bit. But um, that's the match I really wanted to see. It didn't go long, but it was a good little... Um, but uh, It didn't go long, but it was still a good fight, given the fact that they had some crazy grappling. Also got to see Mark Hunt get knocked the fuck out, which very rarely ever happens. And, um, yeah, and it was a bad knockout, too. And I like Mark Hunt. Um, there's another MMA bout. Um, Mark Hunt is one of the guys that I always wished... Uh, UFC would have picked up, but um, I doubt he would make the weight limit as far as uh, the top-end weight limit for the heavyweight division, so that would probably never happen. 
Um, also, we had Prokop taking on Hoi Man Chow, um, which was interesting to watch. Uh, pretty much, Prokop just chopped him down, kicking his legs until he finally got a leg injury. Uh, Prokop looked pretty good, but you never really know taking on a guy like this. This was a freak show match, which, you know, K1 likes doing because the Japanese love them. So, there was that. Also, we got uh, the main event which was Sakuraba, which I, I'm a big Sakuraba fan. He's definitely way, way, way past his prime. But him taking on Tamara, um, that was that was okay. Um, it was just kind of eh, not what you would have probably wanted to see. You also had um, the finals of an under-18 tournament on this card. None of those matches were all that great. Um, you also had Bob Sapp taking on an anime character. I'm shitting you not. He took on an anime character guy dressed up as an anime character, um, you know, it was Bob Sapp, it was a Bob Sapp match, what are you going to do? Um, I would go into the rest of these, but I, I truly have no idea who a lot of these guys were, to be honest, so I'm not even going to try, but um, it was a pretty good show, like I said, um, a lot of entertaining stuff, they opened up the show with a marching band and all of this stuff, but the real reason why I wanted to talk about this was because of the Alvarez fight. Um, they announced, WAMA announced, and if you don't know who WAMA is, WAMA is the organization who Fedor has their title, their heavyweight title. Now, um, the idea behind their titles is, is that they would give their titles to the guys who were considered the number one fighters, and then that they would fight everybody and you would have a true number one, um, and they would be able to cross promotions. Big problem with that. UFC is not going to cross any promotions with anybody, and so in a lot of the weight classes, um, there's really no reason to have a belt because UFC has a stranglehold on a lot of the top talent. Now, in heavyweight, that's not so much the case as long as affliction is around and paying guys, um, which, you know, we have to wait and see until after the upcoming affliction pay per view if that's still going to happen. Um, you're still, you know, you've got. They'll, they'll, you know, I would say that is every bit as good, if not better, their heavyweight division than UFC's. And then, of course, you have the lightweight division, which is the other division where UFC does not have a complete stranglehold on the top talent. So, Whamma decided that the that they would um, crown their lightweight champion. Now, a lot of people took exception to this, and I understand this. I'm going to give kind of my feel on this and my take on this is that even in Whamma's own rankings, uh, BJ Penn is the number one lightweight. I think everyone agrees he's the number one lightweight. The problem is, is that even, no matter what, it looks like he will not be fighting in the lightweight division for, by the time he fights there again, it could be a year, could be even more than a year, maybe a, uh, a year and four months. And in any rankings, um, at, if you haven't fought in a division for a year, you're basically taking off those rankings. Now, that hasn't happened yet, and Whamma definitely kind of did this early. I think if they would have done this in the spring when it was evident that Penn, there was no way Penn was going to be able to fight within the year time span, that, <clears throat> that then they could do this and people wouldn't be all upset. But people are upset because they're saying, well, why are you giving these two guys the shot? when your number one ranked guy is still the number one ranked guy. And I completely understand that, except that if you truly look at it, it looks like Penn will not have fought by the time he fights in the lightweight division again. If he ever fights in the lightweight division again, um, I would say it would be a, probably close to a 14 to 16 month absence um, that he would not have fought, which, you know, that's UFC's fault. For, for basically having a champion and not having them fight that often, which is kind of moronic in my view. Even if, you know, I understand they want to put on this super fight, that's fine. Why not have an interim champion at lightweight while all this is going on? I'm just asking. But, so we have this, and the idea was, was that the winner of this would take on the winner of the Hanson Jay-Z Jay -Z fight, but that fight was canceled at the last minute. I would imagine the reason why they did this, and I think they just kind of jump-started the whole thing, was that this spring, when they really could have announced it, they're probably going to have a fight between those two guys, Hanson and Jay-Z, because those are, they were basically fighting for the Dream Championship, and then against the winner of this match, and that would have been um, kind of the match, and you would have had 
your unified number one uh, at that point is what I would imagine they would be doing. I also wouldn't have imagined if they thought that they were going to put that on on a um, if they if every guy if the guys could get in the U.S., which is easier said than done, um, on the next Affliction show if there was going to be a next Affliction show. So I would imagine all of that paid a big part into all of that. I think people are completely overreacting. A lot of people um, don't like the belts. They think that you're just adding more belts. I don't mind the belts because almost every other organization recognizes them and recognizes the fact that they will let their guys fight for the belts. So I don't see any problem with it. A lot of people are saying you're basically just creating a belt that's the best guy that's not in the UFC. If that's the case, that's the case. If that's the way people want to look at it, that's the way they want to look at it. I would hope that if enough people actually cover the wham of belts, that people will start to see, you only have two right now, that not all of the best talent is in UFC and that maybe that will bring a little more attention to that fact and might force UFC to at least sign some of the better guys that are not signed, even though they can't sign all of these guys, there's reasons why they can't sign some of these guys so that are beyond you know UFC just not paying them. Um, but bring some, you know, that out there and maybe the casual fans can learn that there is MMA and good MMA outside of UFC. If that's the case, then this works. If not, then, you know, it is what it is. But I just thought I would come on here talk a little bit about that. One other thing I wanted to talk to, talk about, <coughs> because we are talking about a Dynamite Show, and Dynamite Shows are, as I said, the big year-end um, shows for, for K1. But during the... Um, The last two pay-per-views, actually, the last two UFC pay-per-views, I have seen comments, and not that I take them very seriously, because I think it's probably people that just have not seen a lot of MMA, but um, have said both that they felt like either A, um, the last two UFC pay-per-views were the best UFC pay-per-views of all time, and that's debatable. And I've seen other people, and more than one, say that they thought that those were the two best MMA pay-per-views of all time. That I have a problem with because, particularly the last pay per view, because I've seen two pay per views, well, two shows um, in Pride that had Jackson, um, Silva, and Nog all on them and were better shows. And in one of those shows, uh, Silva and, or yeah, Silva and um, Jackson were fighting. So, eh. Um, so that we're better shows, and then that doesn't even include, you know, Shockwave 04 and and, num and numerous Shockwaves that I would say were better than that show too. But it begs the question, and I, I have kind of searched YouTube, seeing if anyone's ever really talked about this. I haven't really seen a lot of people talk about this, but I, I think it's a fair question. Um, what would you say is the best MMA card of all time that has happened? Um, what is the show that you think is the best? Is it the K1? Is it the Pro? Is it the Pride K1? Um, Shockwave Dynamite show. A lot of people think that's the best MMA sh card of all time. Um, I personally think it probably is, though it's not my favorite. To me, Shockwave 2004 is my favorite MMA card of all time. But it's a question that I thought I would throw out there to the MMA fans and see what you guys thought. What you guys, what are, um, what you guys think is the best card? Because I think that it really kind of bugs me that this isn't talked about a lot because. You would like to see UFC, for example, try to put on a card that was better than <coughs> past cards that are seen as the best cards of all time, and and just kind of have a reference for that. Can it ever be topped? Can some of these cards ever be topped, or will they ever be topped? That sort of thing. Just throwing that out there. Um, I thought it would be a good little kind of you know thing people can comment on. But um, I, I do have the the uh, the K1 results if you want to read it. Like I said, I wanted to talk about the K1 just because of the Whamma thing and um, a lot of people up in arms over the Whamma thing, which I think is ridiculous because I think there is a place for it. Um, I agree the way that they went around doing it was ass backwards and uh, didn't help their cause any, but I do understand why they did it. Um, like I said, I, I would imagine there's probably a little bit more to it than we know and that they were hoping to have a fight probably in the spring and they just kind of jump started everything, but hey. Um, other than that, hope everyone had a good, safe, 
and wonderful New Year's. Hope everyone party hardy and had fun and, and all of that junk. And uh, I am out. Have a good one. Later.